What's up people, it's DevSage here, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you about the builder design pattern. The builder pattern is a creational pattern that is used to construct complex objects. The builder pattern allows us to create complex objects piece by piece by creating a new instance of some object with some baseline properties, and then from there, we can add properties to that object one by one as needed. And then at the end, we finally build and construct our fully constructed object. So the goal of the builder pattern is to separate an object's construction from its representation. I'll explain what I mean in a second. But let's say we have a person function here. Uh, and this person is going to take in a name, a weight, a height, and a gender. And let's say this dot name equals name, this dot weight equals weight, this dot height equals height, and this dot gender equals gender. Okay, cool. Seems pretty simple, pretty straightforward. But there is one potential issue that could come up when it comes to constructing a new person object. So let's go down here and let's say we have where we try to construct a new person. So let's say const Patrick equals new person. Uh, it's going to be Patrick. Let's say my weight is going to be, let's just say five height, um, 2.2 and male. So we're constructing a new person instance. And let's say that, for example, that these lines, that the person constructor function here is in a different file than this line here. And let's say I wrote this code and then I didn't look at this code for a year. And I tried to come back to it to understand what it was doing. So if I came back to this line and I said, okay, we're constructing a new person. Okay, the person has a name. Patrick and it has a gender, he's a male. And then I looked at these numbers, five and 2.2, what five and 2.2, what do these mean? I, I forgot what these actually meant when I originally wrote this. So I would have to go and find my person constructor just to take a look at, all right, what arguments were these? Okay, that was weight, so that's five. Okay, the height was 2.2. Okay, and now I understand what the arguments meant. There's a way we can write this code such that we don't have to go through the process of uh, potentially confusing ourselves in the future. And we can do that by using the builder pattern. So the builder pattern basically comes in two pieces. The first piece is going to be the object that you want to build. And in this case, that object is going to be a person. So we're going to be building a new person using the builder pattern. The second part is we're going to have a separate class or a separate constructor function that acts as the person builder. So there's going to be a separate class outside of this person that's going to do the building. So let's go down here and create a new person builder. So let's say function person builder. And this person builder can take in some baseline information, some baseline properties for the new person that we want to build. In this case, let's pass in the name and the gender. Since these two properties didn't really give us much trouble uh, when we were initially looked at the, um, the new person here, it's the, the weight and the height that we want to kind of have more fine tuned control over. And that's what, um, what I'm gonna be showing you uh, uh, later on down the line. But in this case, we can just set this.name equals name and this.gender equals gender. Okay, so at this point, we have a name, we have a gender. So how are we gonna handle the weight and the height? So we're gonna do that by adding setter methods on this person builder. So we're gonna say this.setWeight equals function. We're gonna take in the weight that we want to set, and we're gonna set this.weight, so we're gonna set weight the weight of the person builder to whatever weight we pass in. 
and then we're going to return oops we're going to return this which is going to return an instance of the current person builder that's being called with set weight so it's just going to return it's going to set the weight of the person builder to whatever weight we pass in and then it's going to return an instance of this same person builder what this will allow us to do is basically chain method calls on top of one another and, and i'll show you how that works later but let's go ahead and add a setter for our height so let's say this dot set height equals function and we're going to take in a height and likewise we're going to say this dot height equals height and then we're going to return an instance of this of the person builder all right so we have mechanisms for setting the name and the gender which will be passed in directly to the person builder and then we also have these methods these setter methods that we added for being more clear about how we set the weight and the height of a person so now we actually need to build or construct this new person and we're going to do that with a build method on the builder so we're going to say this dot build equals function and then we're going to just return a new person and we're going to pass in this dot name this dot weight this dot height and this dot gender so this person builder has a build method on it and this build method is what's going to be responsible for actually constructing a new person and it's going to return it so uh, while we would directly call set weight and set height we we're not necessarily caring about how the object is constructed so when I said earlier that we're separating the object's construction from its representation, that's what I mean. The, the construction part is handled specifically by this build method for the person builder, while we, and I'll, I'll show you this in action in a bit, uh, we're just going to be responsible for calling the methods on the person builder, set weight, passing in whatever weight we want, and set height, passing in whatever height we want just to be a lot more clear about what the weight and what the height should be. So let's see that in action. So let's go down here and let's comment this out. And let's say const dev sage equals new person builder. We're gonna, we're gonna start with a new person builder and we're gonna pass in those baseline properties, the name and the gender. So let's say name dev sage, gender male. And now what we can do is we're going to set our weight and our height, but instead of passing them in as arguments to the person builder, we're going to just call, um, well, let's do this. Let's say dot set weight. We're going to pass in some weight, let's say 20. And because set weight, remember, um, set weight and set height, they return this because it returns this, we can actually call another method from the same person builder. So um, we, we set the weight to 20, but then we can also call set height. And let's, I don't know, let's, let's pass in 100. And so now what we've done is we've created a new person builder, giving it a name, giving it a gender, setting the weight and setting the height of that person builder. So now all that's left is to construct it and basically return a new person. So DevSage is actually going to be a person instead of a new person builder. But we do that by calling dot build. And that is going to return a new person, which is actually going to get stored in DevSage. So let's console log DevSage and let's run this. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, we have a person object, has a name of DevSage, a weight of 20, a height of 100, and a gender of male. So all that seemed to work. So we just used the builder design pattern 
in order to create a semi-complex object, an object that we could basically construct piece by piece uh, without having to worry about specifically how it's built. We've separated the construction of the object from the representation of the object. We've made more clear what we actually mean when we construct this object by adding these specific setter uh, methods on the builder. And that way, okay, it's a lot more clear. We're setting the weight and that's 20. We're setting the height, that's 100. Okay, cool. And we don't even have to worry about the, you know, the specifics of that, that problem that we had earlier of, of what does five mean or what does 2.2 mean? The builder pattern makes it a lot more clear what you mean when you define and construct new objects. It's very declarative. It's, it's very, this is what I mean. And you don't have to worry about specific syntax or a specific order of things. So it's very useful in that way. So that is the builder design pattern. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, post them down in the comments. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more web dev explained simply. But other than that, peace.